Horror Ministries present the Hour Power Radio Show. Join Dr. Joe A. Whitaker and yours truly, Pastor Samuel Brown, for an hour of power. Each and every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Metal Radio. If you're in the tri-state area, it's a 103.7, 92.5 on your FM band. You can also listen in on your phone for free at 712-432-7101. Online at www.com. Radio.com from anywhere in the world. It's an hour you don't want to miss. Amen. Those in the audience, amen. Give God praise again for those who are watching Woo! via internet. Give God praise for internet viewers. Come on, Horak, you can do better than that. Amen. Once again, give God praise for our senior pastor. In her absence tonight, amen. Just coming back from Israel, amen. Still jet lag, still not feeling well, amen. Uh, we want to talk about her book. Somebody said book. Book. Amen, book, amen. We want to talk about her book, amen. She has written a great book called The Journey, amen. The Journey, Pursuing, amen, the path to your promise, amen. Our pastor is a purpose-driven person. Amen. And she's a woman who wants to see us grow. Amen. In ministry. And she has given us this autonomy and this leverage. Amen. To exercise our purpose. Amen. And we are glad that we have a pastor like that. Give God praise for Dr. Joan yes. E. Whitaker again. Amen. We want you to get her book. Cameraman, please focus on me here. We want you to get her book. Amen. It's the journey. Amen. Get her book, The Journey. Amen. And I want to tell you where you can get it. Amen. You can go to, I uh, think, uh, it's Tate Publishing. Amen. And Enterprise. It's www.tatepublishing.com bookstore. Amen. Or you can call 888-361-9473. Amen. Or you can just call her. It's 914-330-7973. Two, two. Or you can write us here, right here at House of Refuge, 81 Croton Avenue, Austin, New York, 10562. Give God praise again. Amen for all. And now we're going to hear again from the Horak Praise Team. Woo! And what they'll be singing, Kay? They're going to surprise us. It's a treat. We're coming to the finale. Get ready for a cheap us. treat. Get ready for a treat from the Horror Praise Team. Put your hands together. Woo! Acapella style. Woo! This is Live Church on the radio. This is MellowRadio.com. Give God praise again. Woo! As we promised you, we will never have a dull moment on our Hour of Power show. And even in our live extended edition, there will not be a dull moment. Give God a shout of praise, all right? One of the things with your purpose, the Bible tells us there are times we're going to have to forget some of the experiences we've gone through, right? The Bible says, Paul actually said, forgetting the things which are behind... Right? And we're going to move towards our purpose. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm moving toward my purpose. And touch that same neighbor and look at him in the eye and say, please, please forget the past and move forward to your future. Come on, tell another neighbor that's close to you, forget, forget yesterday, forget the past and move on towards yesterday. Move on towards tomorrow. Because God has a better plan. God has a better place for you. There's a destiny that God has for you. Do you believe that somebody? Yes. There's a place that God has for you. My brother's in the back. God has a place just for you. Amen. We're going to worship God tonight. Sing the song with me. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you all things 
you. Hallelujah. On the television land and over the radio land, there's somebody is saying, I just can't go back. I need about 20 people in here to shout a praise like you're losing your mind. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do to me. Say what Hallelujah. you want to say to me. Treat me all you want to treat me. Well, I'm too tied up right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got too much purpose right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got vision that awaits me right now. I need a praise in here from somebody. Glory to God. Hey. Glory hey, to God. Hey. Hallelujah. Can you sing it one more time? We're not going back. Glory to God. I'm saying, I'm not going back. Moving ahead. Here to declare to you. My past is over in you. My things I made. I'm 
up for God and yes. the praise and worship team. Yes. Glory to God. You see, the one thing about purpose is, especially God's purpose, this move is subject to the Holy Spirit. Yes. So it doesn't matter where we are, whether or not we're being broadcast around the whole world. We thank God that we're able to do that. We thank God for all the mellow radio listeners, for all the those that are streaming live. Yes, this is the hour of power, the extended edition. But this hour of power, extended edition, belongs to the Holy Ghost. Yes. So just in case we thought that this was just some haphazard thing and that God wasn't in it, his presence is indeed here because he has declared that we shall walk in his purpose. Yes. Phil Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 says that it's God who works in us for his will and his pleasure. Yes. And Pastor Sam, I just need you to come with me on tonight because I feel like I just need to release these two. Y yes, yes, and we are going to do that. To, to, Amen. to do what it is that they do. Amen. Uh, we have 25 minutes left. Amen. And we want to make sure we maximize we, every moment. So Amen. that means Utilize calm down, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to maximize it. Because I, I feel just, a praise in here. Yes. Okay. I just want to welcome. Somebody give God a praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just jump on your feet and give Hallelujah. one minute of crazy Don't praise in here. Get the devil upset. Give God a crazy praise. Don't start nothing. Shout out to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. Yes. That's how we do it. We said live church, live on the radio, right? Welcome, Pastor Michael. Prophetess Williams, Delphia Williams, welcome. And today is her birthday. Yes. Can, can we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to the woman of God. Woo! She's 25 years old today. Yes. Happy birthday to you. At least you look like 25. Happy birthday to her. <laughs> y'all don't want me to sing, right? Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Okay, you know you're not supposed to sing live the lady. I know my purpose. I kept quiet. Welcome and thank you. It is, it is so appropriate. God is so awesome that that was the song that led into um, this session. And these are people that identify with walking into their purpose. We've been building. We've been discovering. We've been transitioning. And now we're going to speak to um, Pastor Michael and Prophetess Williams about walking in your purpose. And I, I said the song was appropriate. Um, you make all things new because they have a powerful testimony. And in just a few uh, brief words, I just want to ask you all just to share a little background of your testimony because it's going to show people that um, God changes you. He makes all things new and he puts you into purpose. Sometimes we see people, we see um, Pastor Michael with his book, with his ministry, international ministry. We've seen the prophetess who's been established and has been in ministries all over the world and birthed out a ministry of her own. And we assume that it's just been like that and they've never had any issues in their past. I'm going to start with you, um, Prophetess. Can you just tell us a little bit about um, your background? Amen. Praise God. There has been a, such an awesome shift in the realm of the spirit with yes. that song alone. Amen. And with that song, God began to show me where he was just breaking down strongholds and invisible walls was coming down because he is now making all things new. And that song was so appropriate for me because when um, this woman of God told me about it, the Lord began to, um, he took me back briefly over my life mm -hmm. and how he made all things new. Mm -hmm. um, growing up as a child, I was verbally abused. And so finding your purpose is, if the enemy could cause you to lose your identity, he can also cause you to abort your purpose. Yes. And so growing up as a child, I was verbally abused. Now the thing was, I knew that something was on the inside of me, but not knowing what it was. Because growing up, playing with my doll babies and, and, and playing in the garden, the Lord began to remind me how I was in the garden. And I used to tell the doll babies to get up and walk. 
and the Lord began to show me how I had faith as a child. I had childlike faith where I almost thought that I could have walked on the water mm -hmm. because he had put that faith on yes. the inside mm -hmm. of me. And so he always dealt with me with visions and dreams. Yes. And growing up as a child, around about eight years old, I had this vision where I found this gold cross and I put it around my neck. And I woke up the next morning and I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I said, I dreamt I found this gold cross and I placed it around my neck. And she said, what this is that you have to go through in life? You know, and, and I was like, I was so, I was so joyful of finding this, this golden cross, but not knowing the significance wow. of what I had to carry. Yes. And so growing up as a child being verbally abused, mm -hmm. I lost my identity. Yes. I lost my identity and found it in other things. Yes. Because now, here I am supposed to be enjoying my childhood. I'm hearing things a child should not hear. Right. Because my mother was frustrated mm -hmm. because her husband was dealing with all kinds of things. And so me being the last child, yes. I'm dealing with issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm losing my identity and I'm finding it in drugs. I'm finding wow. it in, 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 in smoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did yes, that. Yes, yes. And closing the nightclubs down. Yes, Fornication, yes. idolatry. Yes. I've been there, yes. done that. Amen. You know, and so mm -hmm. God on this, this process and, and I'm here lost and I'm going from day to day trying to find and my biggest friend was alcohol. Yes. Talk to mm. My biggest friend talk was alcohol. Me. I had to drink mm -hmm. to bury the hurt. Yes. I had to drink to bury the pain. You know, because there was something that was missing on the inside of me mm -hmm. that I was looking for, but I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. And home was not the place for it. Yes. And so I had to find it around the bar rooms and I had to find it in relationships yes. that was abusive. Yes. And so here it is now, God is, is, is carrying me on this road that I don't understand. And so many years later, when I was about 23 years old, the Lord, I was in this abusive relationship that was deadly. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me. He said to get out. He, he, he uh, showed me to this bishop, mm -hmm. and this bishop um, sent word to me. He said, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you're doing, but God said to tell you, get out of that get relationship. Yes. Yes. And I obeyed God. And if you want to go and walk into your purpose, you must obey God at whatever cost. Yes. Yes. Obedience is the key. Yes. And so I gave my life to the Lord after that deadly, almost killed me relationship. I almost died. Literally, I almost died. But God delivered me. And so now here it is. I'm discovering who I am, but still not finding myself because I lost my identity. Mm -hmm. And so now here it is. God now is just... Now, bringing me to this place now in Christ and, and, and seeking to find out who I really am. Mm -hmm. But he did it through his love. Yes. Yes. Awesome. He did it through awesome. his love in my life. Amen. 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 Uh, yes. I yeah, I, She's getting ready to you, preach. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what is awesome? God is behind this whole thing because I didn't even realize that when you two were paired together because you have a somewhat of a similar background. Pastor Michael, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my background starts with Psalm 118, verse 17, is basically, you wanted me just to talk about my background. Yeah, and you know there. that supernatural experience and what you were doing before you became Pastor Michael. Okay. My testimony, my background really starts in Psalm 118, verse 17. It's a simple message. I shall not die, but live Come on, and declare the works <laughs> of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can somebody declare that tonight, today? Yes. Yes. I shall not shall die, not die. But, I shall live. but live and declare the works of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. As we speak that word, the gates of hell are being shaken today. Yes. Some, somebody's yeah. purpose is coming to life yes. in the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Yes. That is my testimony. And it started with 10 years of drug addiction, smoking marijuana heavily. Yes. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. I was doing something without ceasing, <laughs> not praying. Make it two of us. <laughs> uh, Make it two of us. Oh, God, have mercies. <laughs> Amen. I was heavily into the drugs, the smoking, and 
at the end of 10 years, it was not as exciting as it used to be, and I wanted to get out of it, but it was just like a prisoner at the mercy of the jailkeeper with yes, no sir. way out. Mm -hmm. yes, I began to have pains in my body. I began to have headaches. I began to cough up this terrible mm. black stuff. The only thing that I could do every time I tried to stop, I went through the withdrawals. Only thing that I could do to go forward was keep smoking. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. The last month of my addiction, I would go down, I would lay down, and as I lay down in bed, I heard a voice that said, you're going to die, you better do something about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to die, mm -hmm. you better do something about it. Yes. So here am I 20 years later saying I shall not die, but live yes. Yes. and Hallelujah. declare the works of the Lord. Yes. Yes, Hallelujah. At the time, I, I was so anti-church, I was so anti-Christian, that was the last place that I wanted to be. I was brought up in a very <laughs> traditional church with a, a very boring ch children's church with an 80 year old yes, minister sir. who had halitosis. Yes, who yes. knows what halitosis <laughs> is? Bad breath. It's, it's the fire, but not the fire of the Holy <laughs> <Yes>. Ghost. <laughs> and it was bad. So if you can imagine, my impression of God was the same. Although I'm a 30 year old man, I'm still that 16 year old boy that has to be with it, you know, two feet away from this man with the breath of death. So <laughs> the last thing I wanted was church. But thank God he was speaking to me. I had a grandmother that was praying. And for anybody that's praying for a loved a love one, do it. Continue praying because God moves in the supernatural. Yes. God is able to communicate with a person no matter how deep of a pit they are in. Because me laying on my bed, taking journeys, drug, drug journeys, the Lord is telling me, you're going to die, you better do something about it. And I was scared enough that when somebody invited me to church, I went. I was looking for a solution. Yes, I we, was we, looking we're for We're talking a to Pastor Michael and Prophetess, amen, Delvia, amen. Uh, we, you, you guys are here, and you guys are now functioning, amen, and are walking into that, that purpose, that, that, that promise of God. But we know the road is not easy. And she have shared, amen, a, a, a synopsis of where she's coming from. You have shared. And we all here can, can relate to that. Because I remember um, I, I was smoking to the point where when I went to the doctor, the doctor said, you won't see 25. Mm. Because your, your liver, amen, is, is going to be so damaged that you, you're going to die. And I was drinking so heavily. I, I, I remember um, when I got saved, Pastor. And when I got saved, I was on my way to kill, to commit a crime. Because I'm from the street. I'm never churched. I know nothing about church. I'm from the street. I'm a street boy. I live on the street. All the wisdom I carry is street wisdom. Amen. My smartness comes from the street. I learned to survive. I'm a survivor. And, and, and God transitioned that into ministry and helped me to be a survivor. And, and that's why I'm so open and blunt. I don't, really, I don't really care faces. I just do what God has come to because I know where he has brought me from. And I know my assignment. You can relate to this. Uh, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, young man, you're not going to see 25 years old. Amen. And I was about to kill uh, my relatives. Because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick and tired of being in that prison place that you're talking about. That place where you're stuck and you say, you know what? Enough is enough. And you have gone through that and you have written a book. We want to talk about that for a second. He has a book. It's called Miraculous Prayers. How to Get Your Miracle from God. Um, he flows in the gifting of healing. He has the gift of healing. He had a supernatural experience. Um, it, you, you have to read the book and you have to check out the next episode of The Journey. It's on there, Shameless Plug, where he had a supernatural experience like his second week going to church where the Holy Spirit used him, an unchurched person, to pray for everybody in the congregation. Lay hands, had no idea what he was doing, but the Spirit of God um, managed manifested and 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 he's walking in that purpose he has this book out he's uh, connected to an international ministry um, and I, it's just to show you that it doesn't matter where you come from there's still purpose these are people that are established in their purpose um, talk to us a little bit how you all move from 
um, your, your background of verbal abuse, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, uh, relationships that you shouldn't have been into, this place where God is using you to minister to thousands, to minister to yeah, the How nations. does it feel? Yeah, how does it feel now? It's, for me, um, it's a tremendous transition, transformation for me because now that I know who I am, and one of the things the Lord spoke to me many years ago, that's how I brought out my ministry called Earthen Vessels, mm -hmm. is that he said to me, you have a treasure on the inside of you. And all of us have a treasure on the inside of us, regardless to our background, regardless to what we've been through. But what the enemy would want to do is to try to smother that and to try to cover that up. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said to me, he said, you have, we have this a treasure that is on the inside of us. And mm -hmm. as the time went by in my life, I began to discover who I am. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so instead of me saying that I was ugly or I was this or that, I began to find myself in God and begin to speak as he saw me, as fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and so the walk with God for me it has been a tremendous, um, exciting, yet challenging because we feel like when we walk with God, it's a bed of roses, especially when you're mm -hmm. coming into your purpose mm -hmm. and when God has a calling on your life, but it's not always a bed of roses. We talked about um, people not understanding. We talked about people, you know, we are being misunderstood. And that is for real. That is fact. You know, but when you come into that purpose of knowing who you are in God and changing and transforming the lives of people who God brings into your life, that within itself is joy being fulfilled. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Once again, you're listening to Horak Radio Ministry. This is the extended edition of the Hour of Power show that heard and on and on and on every Monday night, excuse me. If you need a church home, we are one church in three locations. 81 Croton Avenue, Austin, New York, amen. 750 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey, and 695 East Gun Hill Road. Our service times, amen, here at Horak Ministries, amen, is 10 a.m. each and every Sunday morning, 12 noon and 3 p.m., Amen. Uh, and Friday night, we stream live. Amen. At 7.30 p.m. And we have Bible study every Tuesday night. We are almost out of time, but we don't want to close the broadcast. Amen. Before giving the listeners an opportunity. Amen. To receive the Lord. Amen. As Savior of their life. So I'm going to give you two um, wonderful people the opportunity to pray for the audience. Amen. You know they can respond to you because we're not using telephone lines tonight. Amen. But those who are listening, those who are watching, amen, just I want you to pray the sinner's prayer with them. Amen. And just speak a word over them for two minutes. And then we're going to give you more information. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to sow into our ministry. And then we are going to close out on the radio. And then we're going to ask the audience, amen, to ask us a few questions that they might have before we leave. All right, so for two minutes, please pray for somebody who is watching right now who needs Jesus to be the Lord, Savior of their life. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to heaven and Hallelujah. say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, I come today to you as a sinner. Mm. Forgive me of my sins. I confess all of my sins before heaven and earth. I ask you by the cleansing power of your blood, may you cleanse me of all of my sins. Make a new covenant with me in the yes, blood Lord. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, every covenant that I've made with the enemy, every covenant I've made with the devil, whether it was willingly or unwillingly, Jesus. I break them today in the, in the mighty of name of Jesus. Yes, I Lord. renounce every work of darkness this of day Jesus. in the name of Jesus. I ask you for your salvation yes, today, Lord, Lord Jesus. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit yes, this day Lord. in the mighty name of Jesus. Take me, I am yours. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for saving me today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you believe in that prayer that you have just prayed, welcome into the body of Christ. Welcome into the kingdom. Amen. We want to give God praise for those who just get saved. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 
we want you to go on our website to help us to preach the gospel and we would like you to sow a seed into this great work our website is www.horacministries.org click on the link that said paypal and we want you to sow also we want you to help us amen as we do our global ministries amen and we have a global banquet or gala coming up this april i think it's april the second at 6 p.m the ticket is only 95 dollars so if you're watching or you're listening on the radio we want you to sow into this great ministry please rsvp as soon as possible amen rsvp asap amen this has been a wonderful night and an audience we want to give you an opportunity to sow right now as we're going to have the praise and worship to sing we want you to take up the best seed that you have the best seed that you have those who are listening please go on the website those who are watching please go on the website those who are here take up the best seed that you have and we are going to sow amen as we hear the praise and worship once again you're listening to Horak Radio Ministries this is the extended edition of the Hour of Power show
Amen via internet, amen on the radio and those who are here. Amen. We are almost out of time. We want to give God praise, amen, for our panel tonight. Amen. As we're getting ready to get off the radio airways, but we're still we'll be streaming live on the internet, amen, for the next few minutes. So we want to give God praise for Sister Shamala. Ah! Andrea. The Come on, Shamika and Chevron and Tracy Messiah flowing in the other part of her gifting. Praise and worship leader and to the entire praise and worship team and to all of you and to everyone listening. Amen. We are out of time but not out of God. So until next time, please don't forget that families builds the homes, community, city and country. But the church builds the kingdom of God. Let's live as one and we will live long. United, we are strong. Tune in this Monday, same time, same station, when we'll be doing this all over again. And be off of Dr. Joan he Whitaker and the entire Horror Ministries. This is Pastor Samuel Brown saying to all families, have a good night. Amen. Dr. Joan E. Whitaker and yours truly, Pastor Samuel Brown for an hour of power each and every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Metal Radio. If you're in the tri-state area, it's a 103.7, 92.5 on your FM band. You can also listen in on your phone toll free at 712-432-7101. www.metalradio.com From anywhere in the world It's an hour you don't want to miss The hospitality team is hosting a Penny Bank fundraising event Banking times are Fridays at 6pm And Sundays from 1pm to 2pm the bank location will be in the church library. For more information, please see Minister Esther. Join the Horak Youth Department on the Horak Youth Prayer Line every third Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. The number to call in is 641-715-3580. Access code 609-747. On March 18th at 7.30 p.m., Horak Ministries welcomes Dr. Michelle Corral from the Breath of the Spirit Ministries, hosting the New York School of the Prophets. Remember, Friday, March 18th at 7.30 p.m. Horak Ministries is now streaming every service live on our website at horakministries.org. Kindly fill the seats in the front of the church first, and please minimize all walking until the end of the service. To access our streaming, please visit www.horatministries.org and click on Live Streaming. If there are any prayer requests for the sick, please notify any pastor or leader of Horat Ministries. Journey from the Cross and Beyond presents the Healing Series on April 23rd. Please see Sister K for more information. The Global Team presents the Global Outreach Gala. Tickets on sale now. That's all for Horak News this week. For more information, please see Minister Margaret in the business office. Remember to visit our website at horakministries.org and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Horak Church. Horak Ministries, empowering people every day. Amen. So, what, what we're going to do right now, yes, we're still streaming, but we're going to get a little bit more intimate. This is where you all can get to participate as well, but I did not want to cut these two people off because I strongly believe that this was ordained by God. And as you have heard, they have quite a colorful background, but look what God has done with purpose. And so 
what I want, I had this whole thing planned out, um, you know, because they're, they're both established in ministry. We've already declared that this program is subject to change by the moving of the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Sam is releasing me. I feel like they need to minister to the people because that is what um, their ministry is really rooted in. The one thing um, Pastor uh, Michael and Prophetess, we've talked about kind of behind the scenes, um, is the fact that even when you're walking in purpose, God will still transition you. The transitioning doesn't stop once you start to walk in a purpose. And God will still have you discovering what the next level is. And sometimes it may seem like, yes, I'm in pur purpose, but things are dormant. But do not be discouraged. It's just God taking you to another level. And so I, I, I want to release the mic. I see everyone is here and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a chance to talk to them as well. But I really feel impressed on my spirit that I need to release the mic so Pastor Michael and, and, and Prophetess Williams can minister to the people of God. <laughs> Prophetess, you, you want to go first? Praise God. Yes. Um, if you need to stand, if you need to move around, just flow. Okay. Um, sometimes you come into a, a dry season where it seems as if God is not there with you or he's not for you. Jesus told his disciples, he said, I want you to go into a boat and go over onto the other side. But he never told them that they were going to run into a storm. While he was praying, they ran into a storm. And so sometimes where it seems as if he's not there with you, in the midnight hour, he shows up. And so sometimes God would bring you to that dry place for you to seek him. Because sometimes we get too comfortable in our comfort zone in God, but God goes from glory to glory. And we can never ever get enough revelation of who he is. And so God sometimes would bring us to that place of dry season or dryness where we would seek him. David said in Psalm chapter 42, he said, as the deer panted after the water brooks. And mind you, God will promise you something, but he also wants you to seek him, yes. to find him, to bring you to that place. And so for me, going through this process of dryness, and, and sometimes you be like, God, are you there for me? Are you with me? Yes. And you lose your mind. Sometimes you lose yourself as to, okay, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't hear from you because when Jesus told his disciples, he said, I want you to go over onto the other side. When he came at three o'clock in the morning, they saw him coming on the water and they thought it was a spirit. Yes. And so sometimes God will tell you do something and you got to know without a shadow of a doubt that it is him that's telling you do it. Because you would say within yourself, well, is it God or is it my mind? Is it the devil? Or, you know, you got to know the voice of God in this season when you're pursuing after your purpose, when you're pursuing or fulfilling the destiny that God has for you. And so when they saw him coming over on the water, Peter said, bid me to come. And it's okay to ask God, are you sure? Do you, are you sure you want me to do this? Is it all right for me to do this? It's all right to be Gideon to say sometimes, you know, Lord, I want you to make yes. sure the fleece is wet on this side or dry on the other side. Because you don't want to make a move without God in this season. Yes. Yes. And some of us have been, we've been wandering around for too long and it's so critical in this season that we got to know it on a shed of a doubt that God is really speaking to us. Amen. And when he's telling us to walk over on the water. Amen. 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 Yes. Pastor yes. Michael. Awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You said I had liberty to stand. <laughs> what I want to say, the key to finding out your purpose, the key to walking in your purpose is to realize that you are a carrier of dynamite. Amen. Mm. You are a carrier of dynamite. Amen. You are a carrier of dynamite. Now, you know, when we say this in the world, 
You look at a beautiful woman in the world and you say, you are dynamite. There's no question that you are dynamite. You are dynamite in the world. In my former job, the boss used to say when I came early from an assignment, he said, dynamite. But what does it mean in the scripture? If you go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you shall receive power mm. after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is where dynamite comes in. Mm -hmm. The power. Who knows the meaning of that word power? Dunamis. Does anybody? Dunamis. 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 Greek. The same word that dynamite comes from. So what does this mean? You shall receive dynamite power yes. after the Holy Ghost yes. has come upon you. You shall receive dynamite power, explosive power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I can tell each one of you that you are carriers of dynamite. Mm. Because if you look in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, After you heard and you believed the gospel of yes. your salvation, you were sealed yes. with the Holy Spirit of yes. promise. So therefore, that Holy Spirit, that power, that dynamite power resides in each and every one of you. You are dynamite. And it is that dynamite that is able to carry you into your purpose. It is that dynamite that destroys every mountain in the way of progress, in the way of advancing. It's, that's why I said, if you, whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed yes. and be thou cast in the sea, it shall not doubt in his heart, heart but believe the things he says, he shall come to pass, he shall have them. Amen. The dynamite power is what you need. And my testimony is this simply that I did not get to finish about why am I here to tell you that you're a carrier of dynamite? It's my own testimony, and it can be all of yours after this day, which is when I made it to church that night after 10 years of drug addiction, I spent three weeks in church still battling the drug addiction, still battling it. Very shy, quiet person, didn't talk to anybody, only because the pastor had an obligation to speak to me, I spoke to him. But as, as soon as he was done, I left and I got out of there. My whole body was sweating, I was so afraid. I didn't talk to anybody. After three weeks, one cold night in November, one cold night in November, I always loved the worship. My two hands began to get hot, like they're feeling hot right now. They began to get hot. I did, and I'm still struggling the drug addiction. They began to get hot. I didn't tell a soul. The pastor came up after the worship. He said, there's somebody here whose hands are hot. Wow. Wow. Is there somebody here whose hands are hot? And he said, the Lord told me during the worship that this, that person with the hot hands should pray for sick people and God will heal them. Mm. Is there anybody here who's sick, he asked then. And then a line of 10 people, 10 people raised their hand and 10 people came forward. The first person is assistant pastor, a woman. <laughs> and the pastor says to me, he says, Michael, can you pray for them? <laughs> I put my hand over the microphone. <laughs> you want me to pray for them? The pastor, a woman, I, she, does she know what's going on with me? Struggling drug addict, low self-esteem. The pastor's supposed to pray for me. How can I pray for the pastor? Uh -huh. But I decided to do it. This is a condensed version. The full version is in the book. Amen. But anyway, I decided to pray. I knew nothing about the scripture that so you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But I put my hand on her shoulder and I said, God, can you please heal her? As I went down the line, the power of the Holy Ghost came down and I began to pray. Words came down. Words came out of me. I didn't know where they came from. That's why I say you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost shall yes. come. The power yes. of the Holy Ghost came down that night. And it's the same. It is the same even this night as I tell this story. The power of the Holy Ghost is coming down. Yes, I see him yes. moving in the midst of some of you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost came down. Yes. And I began to say things as I'm praying down the line. And before I knew it, I touched one woman. And she fell on the ground. It's a good thing I had seen that because I'd be out of the country. I would have <laughs> thought I killed somebody. 
the power of the Holy Ghost came down in the name of Jesus. Yes. It came down that night, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. After that, I finished praying, I went back to my seat, and I was like this. I closed my eyes. I bowed my head. I folded my hands, and I'm caught up to the third heaven. I'm in another place. I mean, I don't even know that zone. Yes, yes, sir. I was, the so pastor that I preached for came up. The pastor that I prayed for came up and preached. She came up and preached. I didn't hear a word of it. Afterwards, she came to me. She said, I want to thank you for praying for me. Before you prayed for me, I was not feeling well. I was going to ask pastor to preach. But God healed me, and I was able to preach. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I didn't know what to do. I went home, and I went to sleep. And the first time I woke up that next morning, I took a deep breath. There's nothing in my chest, nothing in my throat, mm -hmm. no pains, Woo! no nothing. Glory to God. And I said goodbye to the drugs. I never went back to them. I never thought of them. I never thought of them again. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, I was walking in Brooklyn, and I smelled something on the street. I had to cover my, I had to cover my mouth mm -hmm. because I, it was offensive to oh, me. Yes, mm. Jesus. So I'm here Hallelujah. just to tell you, you are dynamite. You are dynamite. dynamite. The power of the Holy Ghost is available to bring you into your purpose. And I know three things about the Holy Ghost. Number one, from my testimony, he is able to deliver. Yes, sir. Yes. He is able to deliver. Yes, sir. He is able to deliver yes, from sir. whatever yes. things that you need deliverance from in the name of Jesus. I know that he is able to heal. Yes. He has more than enough power to yes. heal yes. any sickness and disease. And he is able to give you gifts to walk in your purpose in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because that night, whether I liked it or not, I went from struggling drug addict to the gift of healing. Yes, sir. The Hallelujah. calling, the gift of healing yes, was sir. released in my life. Yes, sir. And here I stand as international healing evangelist Amen. in transition. Yes, sir. What's your excuse? Yes, you sir. don't wow. have any excuse. No excuse. Wow. If you can do it for a drug addict, if you can do somebody for somebody at the door of death, he can do it for any of you. Amen. amen. He can do it for any of you. Amen. Let the power of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. come down tonight in the mighty name of amen. Jesus. Amen. Somebody worship God. In the God. mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. We don't want to. In the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Amen. Give God praise for Pastor again. Jesus. We don't want to keep you much longer, Thank but we want to give you an opportunity to ask, amen, three questions. One to the, the people who are walking in transition. And the other one, who, oh, oh, yeah. Discovering their yeah, purpose. Yeah, one who is discovering transition and one to those who are walking in, 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 in purpose. purpose, right? And the other who is discovering. discovering. So it's transitioning in purpose, walking and discovering. So uh, we're going to give it a chance to ask three questions, amen, before we close, before we wrap up, before we go. We don't want to leave you out because you might have something to ask and then you know, didn't get a chance to ask it. So you can ask it now. Uh, we can give you a microphone. Just put your hand up. We'll give you one of the cordless mic right away and you could ask a question. Brother Darrell, could you come get one of this mic? Amen. And give it to the person who's going to ask the first question. So the first question, amen, is to those who are discovering transition. Anyone have a question for those who are discovering transition? Going once. Going twice. Going three times. All right. Is there anyone has any question uh, to those who are transitioning in, in purpose? You're transitioning. You have any question you want to ask them? Going once. Can I ask the audience a question, Pastor? Uh, sure. Um, let's, let's, let's put it on you all because we have established that we all have purpose. By the show of hands, what's, what happens in this room stays in this room. We're here to help each other. We're here to help each other along the purpose journey. How many of you here, young and older, would identify yourselves as discovering your purpose? Amen. Okay. And who would identify as transitioning into purpose? And who identifies as walking in purpose? <laughs> Amen. 
So let, let me let me help them with that one because uh, understand understand this that even though you might be walking in purpose, you're still transitioning mm -hmm. and you're still discovering. I'm still discovering, never stops. All right, we we are, we are not there yet. None of us will ever. Saint Paul said, "I press. I'm not there yet, but I press towards the mark for the price of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus." So why don't be afraid to say, "I'm walking." Yeah, you might be walking in transition or walking in purpose at a certain level, but when but there's mm. another level yes. that you're gonna have to discover, exactly. then then transition into it, then walk into it again. Yes. All right. I know some people when they, they 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 think it's a prideful thing when they say I'm walking in my purpose. Hey, you are walking in your purpose. You're all walking in your purpose, but you're transitioning at the same time and you're discovering. So rephrase the question again. Does we want to see the hands who are walking in your purpose? You're walking in your purpose. Come on. Can we see the hands of people who are walking in their purpose? Come on, pastors and ministers Amen. and deacons. And elders, you're walking in your purpose. Praise and worship team, you're walking in your purpose. Uh, let me explain what walking in your purpose is, means. It means that you're doing your assignment. You're doing what God has called you to do mm -hmm. for the season that you're in. Mm -hmm. For the season that you're in, that's All good. All right? That's good. That, that's what it is. So don't be afraid to put up a hand. Yeah, I'm walking in my purpose. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm walking in my purpose. And the, the, the purpose of that is... Um, you know, just so we all solidify that we all have been created with great purpose. That great purpose is God's purpose. Our purpose is to glorify him. It's a, the Bible says the whole earth is filled with his glory. You are his glory carrier. If you can't identify any purpose, just get up in the morning and say, I am a glory carrier of God. I know we have to get out of here, but I, I, we have to speak to this. Because if we're speaking about purpose... We have to talk about fear, and we'll, yes. we'll, we'll let the panel um, deal with this, because fear is the, the, the antithesis, mm -hmm. if that's the word, mm -hmm. or the, 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 the thing that nullifies your purpose. It's the thing that will cause you to abort. I can speak to it. It's a crippler. It, it is a crippler. That's the word that I was going to say. Yeah. Um, can I ask... Uh, Adria, Sister Adria, um, have you encountered fear and in the level that you're on of discovering your purpose, how do you combat that? Yes, absolutely. Um, fear is a crippler completely. It will leave you in a corner somewhere saying, mm -hmm. God, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Even if he's telling you, you can, I'm going to give you the power to do it. You will sit there and say, no, I cannot do it. And in your mind, it's literally like a blockage in your mind. And you have to overcome that blockage by the power of God and by believing in his word mm -hmm. and what he says. And the Bible says, um, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, right? Okay, so <laughs> it is, it's crippling and it will leave you, um, it, will, it will remove you from your purpose for a long time, a very long time. Mm. Shamela, we're going to skip around. What fear. How oh, have I encountered yeah, fear? and how do you deal with it? Um, I'm, still, I'm still learning how to deal with it. Um, like Adria said, and like everybody already knows, it, it, it stops you. And um, I'm trying not to allow it, you know, to stop me. And that's just being sure of who God is and being sure of what he wants me to do enables me to go for it. It kind of, that's what pushes me or that's what I use as the drive to keep going. So I'm just mm. seeking God to just figure out what, what is it that I'm good at? What is it that he wants me to do? And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, I get like paranoid and I think, okay, this person thinks bad about me uh -huh. or this person doesn't think I'm doing this right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people around yes. us, even they, sometimes they say it to us and, you know, they say, well, I didn't like, I don't like you for this reason or that reason. Or sometimes you just assume that they're saying that. And it kind of, you know, puts me in a corner when I feel like I don't want to move forward. Um, but that's what I'm working on, you know, overcoming. And that's fear to me, just like, you know, I don't want to be a disappointment, you know. And um, I want to do what God wants me to do, but at the same time, 
I want to, I want everyone else to like see that God, you know, is using you or you're mm-hmm. moving forward in God. Um, so for me, that's what I'm dealing with, you know, in discovering my purpose. That's how I'm trying, you know, to push against fear is to do what God wants me to do, despite what everybody else is saying or despite what people think or, you know, things like that. Amen. I, I noticed two things with fear. She said one of it is either fear of the people and it's really fear of what is locked on the inside of you. And um, y'all know, y'all have seen it played out with me here where the ministers have to come, Minister Brown, Minister Brown have to come and, and, and really minister to me for me to even move because of fear. And I'm just determined that I'm not going to allow that to stifle God's purpose in me. And we have to be determined not to allow fear. It's going to exist. It's a part of human experience. But I think back to the book of Ezra. And I love the, 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 the verse that says, in the midst of fear, they were on a mission. They were on a purpose. They were sent back to rebuild um, Jerusalem. And the surrounding people had an issue with them and was always threatening to fight them and to destroy what they were doing. But the word of God says, In the midst of fear, they still built. They still fulfilled their purpose. So even if there's fear there, know that God is big enough because it ain't about me and it ain't about you. It's about his will working in you for his good purpose. So when the fear comes, that's what I focus on. That's what we have to focus on. Am I more afraid of unlocking what's in me? Am I more afraid of the people? Or am I more afraid of God? And I think when we think about who God is, that'll motivate us to fulfill his purpose and kind of brush off how I may or may not feel about myself. But the more you walk into purpose, you begin to get more confident. You really, really do. And you forget about the the people. We allow people to be a big deterrent into our purpose. And on tonight, we are declaring no more fear. We're changing our mindset when it comes to fear. Fear is crippling. It stifles you. It kills you. It kills your destiny. It kills your purpose. Think about even Jesus. And sometimes, yes, he is our supernatural God, but he had fear in the garden. He had fear of where his purpose was leading him. But he said, you know what? Not my will. Let your will be done. So when fear comes to stop our purpose, to stop us from transitioning, to stop us from even discovering what's there, to stop us from walking in what is there, we've got to say, not my will. God's will be done. And that'll crush fear each and every time. Pastor Sam, I'm going to hand it over to you. So, Yes, uh, yes we're going to close. Let's stand, everybody, everywhere. Let's close. Amen. It's a night well spent. Amen. Amen. Well spent. Thank you for and your time. And we want to thank the media team. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for the media team. Woo-hoo! Amen. Great job. Great job. Praise and worship. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. And the panel again, give God praise for them. And for yourself, give God praise for yourself. Amen. Thank you for staying with us. Lift your hands, everybody, everywhere. Father, we thank you. We, we love you. We appreciate you. We extol you. We, we exalt you. You're just such a God. A wonderful Savior, a mighty God, a King, the one who can do anything but fail. Tonight, God, as we go we ask you to go with us help us to take even a nugget from this segment God and to put it in our daily walk God and help us to overcome fear and I ask you now in the name of Jesus that we will love you enough God that we will not be afraid to tell anybody at any time that thou art God 
that you are the God who sits high and looks low, that you save, keep, and satisfy. I pray, God, that you will give us holy boldness, God, to minister your word wherever we are, God. And whatever situation we find ourselves in, I pray we learn to be content, knowing that you are able, oh God, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ever ask or think. We thank you tonight, God, and now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. All God's people loving somebody and shout amen. Come on, loving somebody and give God a praise.